Again, you'll see two layers form once again, and you'll extract the organic layer from the bottom as you did before. Now, you'll be taking your aqueous layer from the hydrochloric acid extraction and putting it on ice. You want to cool it because we're going to neutralize the acid to reform the P-nitroaniline. Since neutralization is an exothermic reaction, we need to keep it cool. For this neutralization, we'll be adding 6 molar sodium hydroxide instead of the 3 molar sodium hydroxide that we will be using for the extraction next. You want to add it drop-wise to the aqueous layer that is, has been removed. In this paper, when tested right away before adding any sodium hydroxide, will look like this, a red pinkish color. As the solution becomes more basic with the addition with sodium hydroxide, it will eventually turn blue. Still, well, the litmus paper is turning a reddish pinkish color, which means that we need to add more base. You're going to continue adding base as the litmus paper is blue. As you can see, the P-nitroaniline has formed again in solution after the neutralization. You can be sure of this by testing litmus paper again with the solution, which will show blue litmus paper if it truly has formed. All this precipitate that you see in the flask will be filtered out through vacuum filtration like we did last week in order to completely separate the P-nitroaniline from the solution. You will then be able to weigh out the P-nitroaniline that you have left to know how much compound you've retrieved from the organic solvent. Once you're done finishing adding the sodium hydroxide, the 6 molar sodium hydroxide, make sure you test on the litmus paper. As you can see, the litmus paper is turning a blue-green, which indicates that the solution is basic. through the vacuum filtration. Notice the solid, your P-nitroaniline that has stuck onto the filter paper of the filtration system. After you've let the compound dry, you're going to weigh it on a watch glass in this, on the scales in the back of the room. Now while your P-nitroaniline is drawing in the Buckner funnel, you're going to want to do the next extraction with sodium hydroxide. Take your organic layer from the last extraction and add it through a funnel into the separatory funnel again, making sure that the clasp is closed before you add it. This time we are going to be extracting using th 3 molar sodium hydroxide as your aqueous layer. You'll be using three sets of 15 milliliter, three molar NaOH for each of these ex for each extraction. Add the sodium hydroxide, and as you will see, like before, an aqueous layer will form on top of the organic layer. The aqueous layer, once again, is less dense than the dichloromethane that is below it, which is why it rests on top. Now, you want to remove the funnel, stop for the separatory funnel, and do what we did before. Take, remove it from the iron clamp, clasping it on both sides with the stopper in between your fingers, 
and you want to vent by opening the clasp with the end pointed away from you and your neighbors. Now close it again and we're going to shake the separatory funnel once again and vent. As you can see, you can see and hear gas and pressure coming out um, of the separatory funnel. It's just Now as you can see, more compound has moved into the aqueous layer. This is the theory behind multiple extractions. The more extractions you do, the more compound will move from the organic layer into the aqueous layer. But this is why doing three extractions with 15 milliliters is better than doing one extraction with 45 milliliters. First thing you want to do is test the basicity on pH paper. As you can see, it turns dark blue. This time will be the reverse of what we did before. It starts off basic and we're going to neutralize it with the hydrochloric acid 6 molar. And then when it's finished, the pH paper will turn red. So you're going to continue adding 6 molar HCl dropwise into the flask until the precipitate forms. As you can see, precipitate is formed in the flask. At first you'll see only drops, drops causing the precipitate to form and disperse and then go away. This is common, this means you're close to where you want to be. Now, to make sure that we're at the point we need to be, we'll test litmus paper again to make sure that it is acidic. As you can see, the litmus paper turns pink, which means that we do have an acidic solution and the benzoic acid has reformed from its salt. You separate out both of your aqueous layers. You're going to have left your organic layer with your biphenyl. To remove the water from the biphenyl, you're going to need adipose, add sodium sulfate and then filter it through a cotton plug into your round bottom flask. Now, what you'll be doing is making sure that you weigh out your round bottom flask that you're going to be using to rotobath the organic layer before you add, you filter through the organic layer in, in, into it. Because you'll need to know how much biphenyl you have after you rotobath off the solvent. And in order to do that, you need to make sure you know the weight of your specific round bottom flask.